Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. What are we going to do today? What's the fun for us? We are going to revive a Cub Cadet. A 1964 Cub Cadet slash International Harvester 122 model, three-speed gear drive hydraulic lift garden tractor. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, that's why I just said the Cub Cadet. <laughs> Let's go! That's right. The old 1964 Cub Cadet 122 is out of the weeds. It is up here in the driveway, behind the dump truck, and this is apparently Project Central. What we're going to do today, or start doing today, is going ahead and taking this thing apart. We have got to replace the clutch springs and teaser spring on this system, the drivetrain, to fix the issues we had a couple of years back when we were doing our lower garden way back there. Uh, other side of the woods we had an issue where when this thing got hot from being used it would start to slip and not stay pulling and just quit working on you after a little bit of research and a new clutch disc we found that the teaser spring which you guys will see later in this video is broken on this tractor and that's causing the problems at least we hope so so got my number two helper here mommy's number one she's in the soap shed making soap but elijah's here he is ready to rock and roll Hopefully not drive it away, but start turning wrenches, taking this thing apart. We start by taking the hood, the grill, and the engine all off and forward to get access to the drivetrain. Let's go. All right, Elijah, let's go ahead and get a 9 16th wrench. A lot of these are gonna be loose. This thing's old and it shakes itself apart every time it runs. Which is this side. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to use that to put all of our parts back into. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Let's see that in the grass, please. Okay. All right, so there's one on the top and there's one on the bottom, right in the middle. What size is that wrench? Um, seven sixteenths. Alrighty. Here you go. This is the voltage regulator. The bolts we just took off, let's put them right back in these little holes and thread them halfway through so we remember where they go. This one right there. There. Alright, need a flathead screwdriver next. All right, let me break this one for you first. All right, I gotta get an extension. Here, Wait. see if you can turn it. You're gonna want to start it here and go towards you, or no, start it there and bring it around towards me. You're doing it. All right, you should be able to get off my hand now. Got it. All right. And now let's do this one right here on this side on the front.
We have the grill off of the front of the tractor here, along with the hood. The voltage regulator is unhooked and is laying back over the PTO or hydraulic pump. What we're going to do next is unbolt the engine itself. There are four bolts that go through the bottom frame of this tractor into the engine. We're going to take them out, slide it forward, and that should give us enough clearance to have access to the drive shaft clutch assembly and everything of that sort to hopefully remove them without completely taking the engine out. Now that there's that much left to do to remove the whole engine, so if we need to we'll go that route, but we'll try and leave it in place first and see what happens. One side done. Now I need to lower the tractor down, move the bottle jack to this side, jack it up, and do the other side. Tractor coming down. I have the engine off of its bolts and it's pulled forward out of the way. At least I hope it's far enough out of the way. What I'm going to do next is take off these couple of bolts here on the drive shaft. I had a spring pin break on me a while back and it broke twice. So I decided to replace them with some grade eight bolts. I know that's not exactly correct, but hey, we're venturing into the land of DIY-isms and old field fixes. So you're just gonna see something different if, if if anyone out there is following along with their tractor, well, it's different. Anyway, we're going to take those bolts out and probably have to release the uh, throwout bearing. What would that be? The arm? I'm trying to think what the equivalent would be with an automotive world. Whatever. The, the arm that's connected to the pedal when you press it and it pulls the clutch off. We're going to take that out too and effectively just try and get the drive shaft out of the tractor next. Got it. With that linkage disconnected, I think the last thing we need to do is take out a cotter pin and then the hinge pin and this drive shaft, clutch, pressure plate, throw out bearing, teaser spring, clutch spring, assembly <laughs> should come out, hopefully. Elijah, every step of drive shaft. Hmm. Cool. Finally got it out. Wait, 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 we need that. <laughs> That's the part we gotta fix stuff on. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so on this thing, you've got your main clutch spring. You've got your teaser spring up here. You have a throw out bearing right here and all sorts of stuff going on. I have a new clutch spring, teaser spring, throw out bearing. This is a new clutch disc, so we should be able to rebuild this thing with all the parts we got, which are here. We're inside my workshop now, and I have the clutch assembly sitting in one of the holes I have drilled in my workbench. This is good for holding things. In this case, uh, this thing is under tension. The springs are tight holding everything super tight. 
I've got to come up with a way to release the tension, which means compress those springs in a safe way so that I can knock these spring pins out and take this thing apart. My first thought is to use some of these woodworking clamps I have and use the bar itself as the compression mechanism and pull it down so I can get this first spring pin out, take off the pressure plates and the clutch disc. Let's see how it goes. Putting on my safety glasses. I have both of the pressure plates off. This is still under compression and tension. I'm gonna go ahead and drive out this spring pin and then slowly release the clamps if I'm able to a little bit at a time. We'll see how that goes. All right, here goes the part to release this tension. All right. That was not too bad. Hooray! Thank you, woodworking clamps. Uh, thank you, Pamela, for getting me the woodworking clamps. <laughs> All right, here you can see that the teaser spring is in a couple of pieces. That's not good. And the throwout bearing. Eh, looks okay, but we'll retake all this off and put new stuff on. All right, I have the new springs on. So we'll go ahead and tighten the clamps down and put compression back on this thing. This new spring compresses a lot easier than the old one. So that's good to see. So my teaser spring. And then my pin. All right, I think at this point I can release the tension because I had to move these clamps out wide enough to put the pressure plate on. I barely caught you guys as you all went for a tumble off the workbench. Sorry. There we go. Oakley Doakley. Pew. Oakley Doakley. Let's go uh, out of the air conditioning workshop. Our new clutch assembly. Well, new parts on the clutch assembly. Drive shaft. Everything all in one is done. Let me find the boys, specifically Elijah. He likes helping me with this kind of stuff and tell him it's time to put this thing back together. Oh, ah, dang it. 
Angela has finished making her soap and she is underneath the tractor right now. She's working on tightening the nut for the clutch spring and everything and we're putting this thing back together. Alright, let's see what you got. Alright, that's good enough for now. I'll have to adjust it later. We are bolting down the engine now, which means I am once again jacking up one side of this front axle so we have access to the bolts on the other side. Over here. And when that's done, we will swap it and do the same to the other side. It's nice having all the help out here. Angela's out here working. She's running the camera right now. Elijah's out there doing tools and he brought us waters to drink too, so sweet. And Isaac got me a box to sit on. Yeah, thanks Isaac. And I'm painting with the spring. Came off of the cub cadet. Cub cadet, I mean. As we've been working on this tractor, we've kind of been talking, Angela and I, as far as what we're gonna do with this thing. Do we wanna keep it? Do we wanna sell it? Um, I always like to keep things when I start messing with them, but that's probably how everybody is. Although she's got a pretty good point that we don't really need it. We haven't used it here much at all. And for the foreseeable future of things we got going on that we know of at least, we shouldn't really need it. So. Because we have the four wheeler and oh, the Oh, oh, right, right. She's over there and she said, because, and I'm like, uh. So we shouldn't really need it because of what we have going on. And we also have the four wheeler. And if we need a big tractor, my brother has one, so. Angela's right, as usual. Two. So we'll probably go ahead and sell this, especially considering that we have the Cub Cadet itself garden tractor. We have a snow plow blade for the front. We have a scrape bait blade for the back. We have a set of cultivators, a single bottom mold board plow, a mowing deck, and a pull behind engine rear tine tiller. I think it's everything we got. That's a lot. Pull that back up here. So, big old package deal. But anyway, we are almost done bolting the engine down. After that, it is put the front grille back on, bolt up the voltage regulator, put the hood on, and then take this thing for a test drive. You ready for the funny sound? <laughs> that was great. <laughs> We'd all heard it, but that was for you. Thank you. That's great. Oh, I like your tan line there. Thank you. <laughs> all right, you get to jack the other side up because I can't reach it. Okay. You go all the way until it hits the bump stop. The little nub has to be on the frame rail. Can I like, pump it? What do you mean? Yeah, let Isaac pump it some. Oh, honey, it's... This needs to touch the frame rail. Oh, let's just totally get, on, get them on the Get flat. on in there, Isaac. <laughs> Isaac, that's called a bottle jack. Oh. Doesn't it kind of look like a bottle? Yeah. That bottle jack is so powerful it could pick up the dump truck by itself. What? Yeah. The whole dump truck. All right, looks good. All right, now you can hop up. I wanna do it. Okay. Put it with me, it's up that Ow. way. <laughs> that was great. It's like a balloon where you go wee. <laughs> Bolt it up. Thank you. 
This seat on the Cub Cadet is pretty worn and busted up, so we have another one and we're gonna go ahead and swap it out. First thing is to take this old one off and probably also this big metal plate that somebody put on there to kind of retrofit and made it work. But let's take it off and see if we can get this new one fitted too. I'm gonna go ahead and move the Cub Cadet over to more of the place where we wash the vehicles and stuff here on our driveway. It's closer to the well house and we can get the pressure washer up. I just took the seat off, so I guess I will drive and stand up at the same time. Ah. <laughs> Stepped off the other side. <laughs> This is horrible. <laughs> This is like the most boring thing to watch ever. This stuff is pretty nasty and I have to say it smells pretty strong. I'm glad we're outside with this. Wait, wait, wait. It, it's doing the job though. It is doing the job. It'll be more awesome when we like rinse the whole thing off and see how clean it came. While Angela is finishing doing the hand scrubbing stuff, Elijah and I are getting the pressure washer out. This is an electric Greenworks pressure washer we got from, I want to say Lowe's or Home Depot a couple years back. It's really great for what we need a pressure washer for. It goes, plugs into a regular outlet, hook your hose up to it, and you're ready to go. So as soon as she gets out of the way and gives us the go ahead, we will blast this thing and we'll see how clean it comes. So I think for this, I'm gonna use the lower pressure nozzle of the two. This is a 40 degree fan nozzle. I think we're ready. Elijah, juice us up. Turn it on. It's another cool thing about electric pressure washers. They're on, but if you're not using it, they're silent. All right, your safe spot's probably gonna be close behind me, huh?
All right, this is my first time ever using this super clean product and it works really good for something like this. I've seen a couple of other people like occasionally on YouTube will talk about it. So I've always kind of wondered this was in the local, well, it wasn't really local. It was like 30 miles away. Anyway, we were in the city and in Northern Tool, they had this, it was on sale. So I grabbed it and this stuff is really good. It is potent, it does get in your nose if you get too close and start puffing and puffing, but it obviously does a really good job too. We are going to take off this metal plate. So we got a one half inch or half inch socket and a half inch wrench. Ready. In a circle. I don't think we're going to need this metal plate for the new seat to go on. So here's a nice piece of it's like quarter inch plate steel. We'll use that for something later. Here's a look at the new seat that I bought. It's nothing fancy and honestly, it was the cheapest one in the store, but it is a metal base and back and it is black and not tore up and falling apart. So looks good. It has a lot of bolts threaded into the bottom for multiple mounting options. So hopefully we'll get lucky and they'll just line up. I think it's gonna be these four in the corner. So we'll bolt it in and hopefully it will just bolt in like I said. Push it. Do we want to see if we have to push it? Alright, let's try taking our bolts out and swapping these angle brackets left to right. It's a race. Who will get theirs in first and ah, force the other to ah, just eat dust? I'm not worried about these bars not sitting on here because this is a metal seat pin. Mm. So while I didn't specifically seek out a metal seat, I'm glad that this is the one I got. Nice. I like it too. It's a lot lower profile. Mm -hmm. There we go. The seat is attached and we were able to use the original brackets. Had to drill two new holes, but that's okay. Original brackets, new seat, looks really good. It actually fits a lot better on the Cub Cadet than that one that was on it when I got it. So all around, good. I think we're done. I'm ready to go ahead and start this thing up, drive it over into the grass where it's a prettier background and start snapping photos so we can sell this thing.
That's going to be a tough thing to sell at this point. He is not going to want me to get rid of that. He is tall enough to drive it, start, stop, everything. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Here we go, guys. Cub Cadet is all fixed up and ready to be sold. Or if he's got the money, he can buy it from me. You got money? Yeah. You going to buy the Cub Cadet? I I'll try to get money. You're going to owe mommy. That's not a good thing. Trust me. Just kidding. Just kidding. Here you go, guys. Cub Cadet is all fixed, cleaned up. Really, really cleaned up. Like, Spiffy. Wow. I think it was <laughs> cleaner than it's ever been. And Elijah got to drive it, so he is thoroughly not wanting to sell it. It was pretty fun watching the grease and everything just kind of like melt off of the side of the mower or mower tractor, whatever it is. Yeah, that thing. It was really nice, and I'm very surprised it came that clean. Yeah, definitely. Two thumbs up for super clean. First time I ever used it, and wow, it really did super clean, clean super, super clean, clean super. <laughs> Well, guys, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment. We love to read them. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See ya. Bye.